Hi, this is the Green Tip Guy. That is my handle on all social media, at Green Tip Guy. My husband and I came to STLV for the first time this year, and it was a blast. We had so much fun just, you know, meeting all the other Star Trek fans and seeing the amazing costumes and just really being a part of the community. It was really amazing. We went as the Tardigrade and the Tardigrade's Keeper this year because we've never done cosplay before, and we thought, why don't we do something that's unique? And we had a lot of fun putting it together and a lot of fun presenting it and just walking around and then bumping into Star Trek celebrities. It was definitely a blast. I hope that all of you had a lot of fun, too, and live long and prosper. Hi, Heather and Jeff. This is Judy from Georgia, and I um, <clears throat> attended my third um, Star Trek Las Vegas uh, last week, and it went by too fast. Um, but I was sufficiently exhausted at the end, as it's always. Um, I thought the panels were great. Of course, seeing Patrick Stewart unexpectedly was like the highlight of the whole week. Um, I think it was probably for everyone. Um, seeing the Discovery cast after we've seen Discovery was amazing and hearing their stories. Um, also enjoyed several of the panels about the technical stuff, the geeky stuff that not everybody likes. Um, but um, all in all, it was an amazing con, always is. Um, I hate it that I did not get to meet either one of you personally, but I appreciate what you all do on the Facebook page, keeping everybody in line. Um, I feel like the question and answer periods went much better this year with the panels. And um, always good to see uh, Jonathan Frakes and Marina Sirtis together because you never know what Marina's going to say. So it was a great, great con. I'm not quite recovered physically or work-wise, but, you know, hey, it happens once a year and we all get together, and I love seeing old friends from years past. See you next year, 2019, Star Trek Las Vegas at the Rio. Thanks so much. Bye. Hi there, this is Johnny Mancuso. I wanted to say that I love this year's Star Trek convention, not only because of the Discovery cast, and they were just wonderful, awesome people. Each one of them was so nice and so excited to be there, and I was just as excited to see them. However, I did meet a lot of my Facebook friends that I have not met for years, and I was able to help a new person for the, um, from Australia for the first time for his convention, and seeing the excitement in his face every day made it that much more special for me. Either way, I had a wonderful time at this year's convention, and I look forward to meeting even more of the people I didn't get to meet this, this past year, next year. Bye. Hi, this is Louis Brandmeier of Clever Orbit, and I am leaving a voicemail in response to the post on the unofficial Star Trek Las Vegas convention forum. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you, Heather, and then your compatriots for putting on uh, that group. Um, it's been a lot of uh, excitement and energy coming through that to me and then me being able to give back over the past, like, six, seven months, uh, feeding the dream of being at STLV and then finding out what I need to know. So uh, I just want to lavish some praise on you guys for maintaining that and um, keeping it organized and all of it. So the convention itself was one of the single greatest experiences of my entire life. Um, the falling of my water bottle notwithstanding, I have been a Star Trek fan for as long as I can remember, and to be in a gathering of as many people like this, excited about it, engaged with it, honoring it, committed to it, was just uplifting beyond what I could have ever possibly imagined. And um, yeah, I'm really curious about more of the unofficial side of it. Um, I really stuck pretty closely to the creation entertainment guide in mapping out my path through the world that was available there at the Rio and thereabouts. Um, and I'm grateful for all the people that I met, um, the things I got to experience, the actors I got to talk to, um, just the way I got to contribute to the community. Like, like knowing that there's a group of people who I can honor and serve, like you all, um, is really exciting to me. And really fulfilling. Um, you know, I've never had that experience. It's always been one-off small conventions of, you know, maybe 100 to 
500 people total, not thousands. So, um, yeah, uh, I think my favorite part was the panel discussion with Shaniqua Martin-Green that I had on Sunday. And um, if there's anything that I would have added, it would have been possibly upgrading so that I could go to that dinner and then, you know, hobnob with the stars at the uh, DS9 thing on Sunday. And, um, yeah, so that's about it. I mean, I've said most of what else there is to say from my side in my own podcast, but I, I just want to participate in this community and contribute to yours. So hopefully that's a good enough review or uh, feedback. Um, yeah, thank you all. Bye-bye. Hi, guys. Michael Nguyen here. First-time caller, long-time listener, big fan, as uh, as you guys know of Shore Leave. Um, you guys had asked for some thoughts and uh, sharing some positivity about the convention, and uh, I just wanted to share a couple notes. Um, I loved uh, pre-con. I loved the Star Trek Las Vegas welcome breakfast. Uh, it was such a relaxed and enjoyable morning. Um, it was just really nice to be able to catch up with friends um, before the convention started over lots of eggs and uh, several, several cups of coffee. Um, during the convention, I think one of my favorites was the amount of just programming and stuff that CBS and Creation are doing for fans and by and, and uh, alongside fans and just seeing friends share their stories and their talents on stage was great. Hi, my name is Simi Butar, B-U-T-T-A-R, and I just want to leave a little feedback on my experience at Star Trek Las Vegas. It was my second consecutive year going. Uh, I went last year and I had a great time and that's kind of why I went back again this year. And it's always great to see the celebrities and the act, you know, in photo ops or autographs and obviously on the panels. But one of the things I think that makes it fun and worth going uh, again and again is, is the fans. When you meet fans and either waiting in line or at Quarks or you know, in panels, just talking about Star Trek and what series do they like or movies and why and having a good discussion. I think that's what makes it fun and that's what makes it better than um, other conventions. So, I, you know, I just wanted to share that little uh, nugget of information. So uh, thank you and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye. You are listening to the Quarter Transmissions. Shore Lead, Episode 47, 2018 STLV Recap. Just what the doctor ordered. Right, doctor? I couldn't have prescribed better. Welcome once again to Shore Leave. This is our 47th episode, and tonight we are going to be taking a look back at the 2018 STLV convention that we've all been back from for a couple of weeks now. Uh, God, I can't believe it's uh, in the past already. It seemed like we were anticipating it for so long and counting down. Uh, but now we're all back, and uh, we're going to be here talking to you about our experiences. And, um, you know, oh, by the way, in case anybody didn't know, I'm Jeff Hewlett, and here alongside me is the always awesome co-host Heather Barker. How are you, Heather? I am great. Episode 47 monumental in the star trek universe and we are now i wonder why 300 <laughs> 347 days from we're starting the next countdown 2019 <laughs> yes uh i am i am not sick so that is great neither am i and uh you know looking forward to recapping our memories from this past year who else do we have with us jeff oh my god we have our two fellow administrators of the unofficial star trek las vegas convention group on facebook i can't believe i've said that right so many times now first up is a many time returning guest to shore leave marina Krauchuk. how are you marina I'm great. Thank you for having me again. Of course. Oh, we always will. We always will. And up next is the wonderful Jesse Akendo. How are you, Jesse? Hello. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on again. Of course. We wouldn't miss it. We wouldn't miss it. So before we jump into our episode proper, uh, we do have a Patreon page. We want to talk about Patreon really quick. You can find it at patreon.com slash the tricorder transmissions or by visiting our website and clicking the big 
Patreon link on the right hand side. Can't miss it. If you enjoy what we do here on Shore Leave or any of our other Tricorder Transmissions Network shows, there are a ton of them please think about joining our Patreon family. You get so many benefits from becoming a patron. You will get instant access to a lot of our unedited and early release episodes, along with some bonus material, uh, usually before and after. Uh, For instance, this show will be available on Patreon very soon with some pre-chat and probably some after chat. Uh, You also, by signing up at any pledge level, you are entitled to get one of our exclusive Patreon supporter buttons, uh, we sent out quite a few of those recently. Uh, everybody seems to really love them, so uh, they're really, really cool. So we'd love to send them to you. And uh, we have some other cool stuff coming to Patreon pretty soon as well, so keep your eyes out for that. And so thank you all, by the way, for your contribution so far. If you're a Patreon supporter, you've really helped us have a great Tricorder 5th anniversary birthday party at the convention this year. It was a big, big hit. We had a ton of people showed up. I, I would, I don't even know how many, but I would say at least three or four times more uh, than we had at our fourth anniversary party last year. It was huge. We had a heck of a lot of fun and hope that you guys will be here next year for our sixth anniversary. So that was a lot, a lot of fun. And, you know, you guys are helping us to get an even bigger and better presence at the con next year. We have some other plans uh, that we're going to announce maybe later in the year or early next year. Things we're all talking about doing uh, for the con next year so and by the way no not not a dime of the money goes into our own pockets by the way everything is reinvested back into our network and into our shows um god we have so many plans i, I would love we, i would love to spill them all now i know heather would too um but seriously uh thank you all and as we always do we have to shout out to our newest patrons we have four new patrons to thank on this episode so kelly williams andy davenport Garen Gillum, Kristen Jewell, thank you all for signing on to be patrons of the network. And Ron Robel, thank you for upping your pledge level. You guys are all, all awesome, and we love you all. Heather, anything you want to add? I was just happy to see everyone's faces. Oh, yes. It was very nice to see our patrons there. You guys are all special. Well, and then to make make new friends like Kristen, who wound up becoming a patron, that just made my heart happy. so. So awesome. Yeah, I'm an emoji with hard eyes right now. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. We all are. So, Heather, do you want to take us into uh, what we're going to be talking about? I do. Um, first, I want to just red alert, black alert, whatever alert everyone um, to please hang in here with us. Listen to the whole episode because we have some breaking news to share at the very end. We're not going to just tease. We're going to deliver um, because it's a pretty, pretty big deal and a pretty, pretty positive, awesome thing. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, man, where do we even begin? I think with this wrap up, we're just going to kind of take it day by day and talk about some of our highlights and try not to go on for, for too, too long. Uh, but I know various people got in at different times. Um, I got in on Tuesday, and Tuesday night is always our our crazy, crazy night of pre-registration and landing party stuff and everything else. Um, so, and we had our newbies and solo travelers event, which I did not get to go to. So, Jesse, as the lead of that event, how was it? Uh, it w- it went pretty well. So we had a little, I won't call it competition because I don't like to use that word, but we had Larry Nemechek's landing party happening at the same time as the landing party, as the, uh, as the newbies uh, get together. So I moved it up an hour, but it didn't really impact attendance at all. And I think it helped uh, the landing party's attendance. We had a lot of people show up. I didn't count this time. Um, but a lot of networking, a lot of nice to meet you, a lot of good advice from people who have been to the convention before. And then gradually the whole group kind of just shifted over to masquerade, which is kind of the hope of that newbies party anyway. You know, you kind of come and, you know, kind of chill out in the big eye bar with the nice seats and everything. And then we throw you to the wolves (laughs) to initiate you into the masquerade. And so I think it worked well. I was, I was happy to meet all the new people. I cannot remember a single name, but I did get a a, a few uh, remarks uh, when I got back home. So thank you for everybody who's, uh, who appreciated the, uh, the get together. I think it, it went well again this year. And of course we'll continue that. Sorry. (laughs) 
not me. <laughs> I had you on mute, and then I took it off to get ready to talk, and of course, Bella decided to talk as well. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Do you um, wanna, uh, since we're on a, do you want to mention the ambassadors as well, Heather? I just yeah. wanted to throw this. Yeah, there. yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll three, two, one, and ask you a question. Okay. Okay, three, two, one. So I know like this was the first year that we introduced the unofficial STLV group ambassadors. And so everyone made an appearance at the newbies and solo travelers party. Uh, from what I hear, it went pretty well and sounds like we might do it again. I think both of you were ambassadors. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yep. I, uh, yeah. Uh, I kind of worked with uh, Jeff and Heather to get the group together and, and formalized. And then, you know, we we, uh, uh, we just met there, gave some cards out for them to give out, and then kind of just gave them a little be safe message <laughs> like we like to do in our group. And uh, I think it went well. I mean, there wasn't as much interaction as we'd hoped, but there was a lot of yeah. presence, if that makes sense. Marina, it's, what, it's, it's a wonderful resource to have. It's, it's one of those things that certainly next year when we, when we go into SLV 2019, it's something to bring up again so people know that this is resource, it's out there, it's useful, available to everyone. But I have noticed that, yeah, there was more interpersonal sort of, you know, the, let's talk about this, what's what people actually in person asking questions. That was a happening maybe, you know, like Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. And then after that, I, I think I actually advise more online through direct messages or just people generally commenting and stuff, um, asking, you know, what's what and everything than actually in person, which is not to say that I wasn't recognized. People actually would come up and say, yeah, yeah I know you from the group or I recognize you from this that or that or, you know, I, I saw you at the newbies party. So it, that was kind of very nice and it was a great feedback. But as far as, you know, actually doing the, you know, what we thought that as an ambassador, you know, come up to me and ask me a question that actually happened to me only like the first couple of days after that, everything else was on, was online. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was really good. I think uh, for, and you know, we had a small handful of people and it's, it wasn't exclusive. We just, I think one day sat down and said, let's do this. And then within a day we, we had, you know, the, the pilot, if you will, the beta tests. And, and I think it went well. I will promise that y'all next year, I shall not forget the badges to identify the ambassadors. <laughs> But for all the ambassadors listening, I have your badge in my living room. <laughs> Do the badges say 2018 or can we just reuse them for 2019? Oh, I think I'm purposely going to scratch out 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Put a little sticker on the year. <laughs> Well, I know that Jeff and I really appreciate you guys dubbing up and doing that and taking some of the pressure off of us. Oh, um, yes, very much so. Being the point of contact, uh, it can it can get overwhelming. So that I, I, I know for myself, it definitely helped. Uh, and I look forward to bringing that program back to next year. I almost said tomorrow, Lord. <laughs> 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 ah, next year. <laughs> uh yeah, Marina, what was your Tuesday night like? Did you did you go to the newbies thing? Uh, yes, or? that was my okay. very first thing. Well, first of all, the obviously the pre-registration, which turned into uh, the usual blab fest because it was like literally going down the the convention way and stopping every couple of feet because there were familiar faces all over the place. Uh, pre-registration, thankfully, as usual, went very fast. And then, of course, the night was first the uh, newbies and we had a little ambassadors, you know, sit down where we talked about it. And then, yeah, the, the landing party and it just went on. I, I can't remember really what time I actually left the bar, but it was, you know, the usual pre-convention boo-ha-ha, which is always great fun. <laughs> Jeff, I know that you had some drama getting to STL. Oh. Oh my god <laughs> i don't even know what time you got there so uh, <laughs> what did you do tuesday night <laughs> oh my god well geez yeah i did have some drama uh sh long story short flight was delayed quite a bit they lost my check bag i got stuck at the airport for almost an hour uh, waiting to get my bag back they did find it so that's a good thing but uh my phone decided it wasn't going to connect to uh lte so i had no data so I couldn't even talk to anybody. So I got to the hotel, I think around, I, I got in, I think I got in about like sometime between one and one thirty. I didn't get to the Rio until 4.30. And then I spent 40 minutes on the phone with Verizon getting my phone to work. So that, that killed a good part of the afternoon. Uh, but I did get to hang out downstairs a little bit, 
uh, that night. I did the pre-registration, of course, and ran into a bunch of people, and I was at Ibar for a little bit and moseyed around, and it was it was good it was good fun. But I, I was just trying to recover from the horrible travel incident that occurred. It's funny because I really never have those kind of travel problems with flight delays and lost bags. That was a kind of a first for me. And uh, that, I guess it was kind of a preamble to <laughs> my trip home <laughs> the the following Tuesday. So uh, where I had even worse problems. But <laughs> yeah, you are not alone. I know several, m- many people, including oh, yeah. I think Jesse, who had issues. Oh, Jesse did. Uh, worse than mine. <laughs> yeah, I almost home. didn't make it home. So. <laughs> oh, God. They just was, can't handle Trekkies at no. McCarran Airport. No, it, 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 and I will tell everyone, it gets old when all the Trekkies leave and you're the last one left. <laughs> yeah, I always, I don't know, I, by Monday, and I stayed through like kind of midday, but it worked out well because much like the first day, uh, I was actually like, I think I had talked about it, that I wasn't quite sure where I was going to be emotionally, like when I walked into the Rio and stuff. And so like took a way too expensive cab by myself. I will never cab. I'm a Lyft person now, y'all. So, um, as am I, my cab ride to the Rio from the airport was 35 bucks. My cab ride from the Rio to the airport was 17 bucks with Lyft. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I got to, well, I it was considering that it was three of us traveling. Uh, my sister and I were going to the convention, and our mother was joining us just just for you know a Vegas vacation. Not that that's not the first time that we've had an arrangement like that. And we took a taxi because you know for three people now it becomes a little bit more reasonable. Yeah. And while I was trying to, I I was doing something on my phone. Either I was trying to do like a mobile check in or something. By bottom line, I was on my phone. I wasn't paying attention, and the cabbie took us for a ride. And I, I, you know, I lift my, I lift my eyes and I see that we're on I-15 and I just wanted to turn around and say, you, pardon me, lots of beeps, uh, <laughs> you know, and we got out and I basically, you know, my, <laughs> my mother's like, okay, trying to figure out the tip, but I'm like, um, you're literally putting in a dollar, like no tip basically, because yeah. this dude literally, it was, it was basically the same thing. I think it was like $32, $33. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. you know, like last year, previous years when we've taken the, 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 the cab, you know, you know, I know, you know, take the paradise road or something like that. And it's usually within a $20 with, with tip, no problem. Uh, but th- this is the first time that I'm like, I can't believe it. I, you know, my ninth year in Vegas and I, I fi- finally somebody, you know, put one over me. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Well, it I'm... happens. It happens. Well, yeah. I'm a I'm a convert now. It came in handy. I used Lyft pretty much any time I needed to leave the Rio. Uh, but you know, I showed up and I walked in the door, and I think there were Tyler, Madison, and Laz, and so I had friendly faces, and I was so excited to meet Laz for the first time in person. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was amazing. just it was yeah, it was great to see them. And then I saw Mickey, and Mickey helped me check in, and so like it was all very cool and calm and kind of the same thing for Monday when I left, which was nice. I wasn't overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Uh, But by, by registration time, like things were crazy. Yeah, they were. Like, I think that that like Tuesday night set off the pace for the entire convention because I barely, like by the time I made it into the vendor's room, I was in there for like 20 minutes and then had to be somewhere else. Uh, I don't even know. I guess it was the landing party or something. Yeah. I don't know. It was it was crazy. Uh, it was a, like yeah, it was, this uh, year's a lot of yeah. really good stuff this year in the vague, in the vendor room. Yeah, this year's schedule was was a, a little overlapping, if you will. But I yeah. want to tell you, I think Marina got stuck in that taxi because that schedule came out late, and I know she was marking <laughs> stuff on her phone. Tom, I, you know what? You may be right. I could have been it because I actually I I usually travel Monday to Monday. And my Monday would try to do, I don't know, maybe an art gallery or a museum, something that's completely non-convention related, you know, maybe see something in the city. Last year we did mock museum. This year, you know, we went to check out Bellagio Conservatory, which is now a tradition, you know, people listening, check it out every year. It's beautiful, beautiful display of flowers. And then 
somebody posts like, oh, the schedule's down. And I'm like, oh, can we please go back to the hotel because I really need to get on the computer and start figuring it out. <laughs> Usually I am never, I felt very unprepared flying in this year for STLV than, you know, than ever before, because normally I have sort of a handle when is what happening, what I can miss, you know, how do I fit the photo ops where and meeting with, you know, friends and everything. And this year it was like, I have no idea when's what. And then the schedule of course dropped and it was just complete panic. So I spent half of Monday basically typing up on my sister's laptop trying to to come up with a little spreadsheet so I have something to go on. Yeah, I didn't even look at the schedule until maybe Wednesday, uh, maybe Thursday. <laughs> I actually, <laughs> I had downloaded the app, um, the Fan Guru app. I had downloaded both that and the Cosmunity one, but then once they said they weren't using the Cosmunity one. I just relied on Fanguru. And I mean, it was not the best thing ever, but at least it did have an easy way to like create your own schedule, which was super helpful for me, um, especially with the billions of discovery photo ops that came at the end of the week. It wasn't the best app, I would agree. But what it did is it kept me focused on what I wanted to do. Because mm -hmm. when you have the paper schedule or even the schedule from last year, I don't remember exactly how it was, you're looking at the whole day and you get distracted by stuff that you miss that like stuff you want to go to mixes in with stuff that may look interesting, but you didn't select it when you did your list. So it was good for me to just keep focused on what I wanted to go to. And I actually mm -hmm. made it to more panels this year because I didn't spend 15 minutes going, but I want to go to that one. No, but I want to go to this one, <laughs> which, which is not good for me because I'm not a decisive person. <laughs> So I don't really remember what I did on Wednesday. That's sad. <laughs> I just remember looking at the schedule and saying, all right, there's not a whole lot on here that I really care about. So I think I walked around and did like vendors room stuff since I didn't get to see much of it Tuesday uh, and, and drop some money there. So were there any panels during the day on Wednesday that you guys went to, Marina? Anything? Yeah. That um, there was actually, you know, just speaking of, you know, just generally the way that the schedule kind of was, at least for me this year, everything started out very like on a low slope, very slowly, and then things really, really picked up by second half of Friday when I literally did. I had like there are like three places that I really, really have to be at. Um, but you know, Wednesday, Thursday were kind of calm. So I actually did manage, like um, same as Jesse, I actually managed to to, to get to um, almost as many panels as I marked off for me as, you know, that well, this was probably interesting and everything. So Wednesday, well, first of all, there was Carl Meany. Uh, that's the only day that he could make it uh, right. because, because majority of Deep Space Nine anniversary was actually celebrated on Sunday parallel to Discovery. Um, so they had, it was a very nice thing. Uh, they, they had uh, him and Hannah Tay together on stage. They had very nice guest star panel. They actually did, I think, two or three of them through the entire uh, week. So this one was nice. They had uh, Martha Hackett on, Kate Vernon, Michael Welsh. I think that's actually was his first convention, Michael Welch. Um, and, um, well, the cues, they had John Delancey and Corbin Burnson together on stage. So that was kind of like the stuff that, that you had. And then in the evening, of course, it was a very, very funny panel of uh, Brent Spiner and Joe Piscopo. I actually enjoyed it more than I anticipated. Uh, I mean, right. these two guys were just playing off each other like like stand-up comics. <laughs> awesome. Jesse, what uh, what panels did you make it to Wednesday? I I just I honestly just stayed in the pavilion, which is the new name this year. I'm still trying to catch up every year. They yeah. change the names of my rooms. Not <laughs> complaining, y'all. I'm not. I'm just noticing <laughs> that there's a change. But um, in the pavilion, the Colmini and Hannah Hate, that was that was more enjoyable for me than I thought it was. Like you know, you think of Molly, you don't think of a young lady who's got a lot yeah. to share. So it was nice yeah. to to hear her speak and where she's going. Um, also, the the Q panel was really fun. But like anything in that room, um, it was so relaxing. I can't even tell you. It's the first time in five years that I've actually sat from beginning to close in that room and was able to enjoy it all because Wednesday was a little light, you know. So yeah. when when there was a break, I went to go do vendors room or I went to the um to the little photo ops and stuff within the halls. I didn't have to go back to my room at all. Yeah. And um it was it was really a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to just sit there and enjoy. And then, you know, the typical people come up and talk to you while they're coming in and out of the panel. So so it was, it was a lot of fun, and and I had a great time there. Um, I, I that was it though. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Jeff, were you alive on Wednesday? <laughs> uh, believe it or not, yes, I was. And, you know, I did not actually go to any panels on Wednesday. I spent a lot of time uh, hanging out with the Fancets folks at the Fancets table. And Wednesday was the first appearance of Santa Gorn. Uh, at the Yay. convention, and it was a it was a great appearance. Uh, I ran into a lot of people who had seen me before, and um, you know were were happy to see it again. And were, I had several people ask me if I had new pins that year, so I, I guess they're uh, people are expecting those now. So that's that's a good thing that uh, <laughs> you know people are expecting it. It was it was a lot of fun. I, I had a good time doing that. Um, other than that, I, you know what? I don't remember. Uh, much else from Wednesday. It was a whirlwind for me. The entire week was a whirlwind. So I'm having a lot of trouble remembering what days things happened. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. I think Wednesday also. Oh, you know what happened on Wednesday with that? I, that it was amazing. I had a uh, a table op with Nichelle Nichols as Santa Gorn. That Aww. was pretty incredible. Wow, I didn't she, know that, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. I we I was walking around. I was walking right by her table, and there was only one person there uh, talking to her and getting an autograph. And I just kind of wandered over there, and I think she was about to leave to go to either a a, a, a professional op or a panel or something. So I was like the last person there, and she could not stop laughing. Uh, from the second she saw me, she just started cracking up and, you know, I sat down next to her and she put her arm on me and she just was laughing so hard. They had to take about seven or eight different pictures because she was, she wouldn't stop moving. So it was really hard to get a good one, but wow, it was, it was a, a very, very, very precious moment uh, for, for yeah, me so sweet. as Santa yeah. Gorn. It was so, especially, so happy. Especially considering that's probably the last time. That we're yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Our, yeah. really why I went for it. You know, yeah. I, I've heard that rumor floating around quite a bit, and uh, but she is still such a sweetheart. She's such a wonderful person, and I'm I'm glad I got a chance to do that. Yeah, me too. It was a day of special moments. Once Colin Meany got mentioned, I remember what I was doing on Wednesday, and that was Haley and I were going around trying to save the day and get Stan Davidson uh, uh, find a way to get him a photo op with Colin Meany because their flight got delayed as well. And they were not going to make it. Uh, so friends helping friends. That is what Star Trek family is about. And that is why I bring it up. Because I think it's just important for people to realize that, you know, we're family. And we do everything we can to make sure that important stuff happens. Yes. Um, if you don't know the story of why Colomini and Captain Pursuit are important to Dan Davidson, go check out Trek Geeks. I don't have the episode in front of me. Um, but you can find the captive pursuit episode and learn how that episode saved his life. Um, so super special day. So Wednesday, I do want to talk about kind of quickly, uh, because we've got a lot of days to go through and not a lot of time. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, Wednesday night was our tricorder, uh, transmissions, fifth birthday bash. And we All were right. so very, <laughs> yes, yeah, so very blessed that, we are. um, two of our hosts popped in and, helped us get a suite this year. Uh, it was something that was important to me because I, I wanted to have a more intimate setting for this party instead of having it at the bar where people were spread out. Um, and I feel that that is totally the right thing to do. Uh, the only snafu was that we were way up on the masquerade and you needed a key, <laughs> a room key just for the elevator. Um, it was a little challenging for latecomers, <laughs> yeah. that's all I'll say. <laughs> for, for, still anyone, a lot of for anyone, really, like, we didn't know what to do because we're like, well, how are we going to do this? So we didn't really make it super public uh, because we didn't have, like, a dedicated uh, bell, like, door, not doorbell, but, you know, elevator person. But yeah, that that was such a fun, fun party. It really uh, the was. room was certainly full, did not count, had people coming and going all night long. Um, there was Star Trek Cards Against Humanity, there was Couch Trek hosted by Polytrex, there was whiskey tasting party with all kinds of especially Canadian whiskeys. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Maple whiskey. And, yeah, which was, oh, that was trouble. Um, so thanks, JP, Barry, everyone who brought that delicious whiskey that I will stay away from because it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. um, but then we also had quite a few things to give away. So we did trivia. Um, William and his 
wonderful trivia minds uh, throughout questions. And so we gave away a ton of stuff um, and just had some very meaningful moments for our yes, next. That, that was a fantastic moment. I won an item and I was <laughs> wrecking my brain <laughs> how I was going to transport it back because I only have carry on luggage with me. <laughs> I came back. Uh, my uh, the hotel suite. My sister looked at me. She's like, "You couldn't wear. You couldn't have won a pin or something." Because it was that uh, gorgeous, large commemorative. Oh, the plate! Yeah, you won the plate. plate. That, that yeah. gym. <laughs> uh, oh my god! I, I was like, I uh, I don't know what to do because actually it didn't fit into either one of my bags and or my sister's. And thankfully, um, uh, mom's luggage was large enough, so we kind of wrapped it all up and lots of clothes and I was like okay just nobody nobody touched this particular bag because the plate is in it it survives uh, yes. yes well good, um, good. but yes thank I, you I for just, the trivia game that was fantastic you're very welcome and just thank you to everyone who came it was so nice to see familiar faces and new faces oh, it was. and especially to meet new listeners and just to to have that time with our network yes. uh, very important to all of us, and especially to Jeff and I. Um, totally. Jeff, any any final words about that party, Jeff? No, I, I no, I, I can't add anything else. I just I had such a great time at the trivia part uh, near the end, where we were handing out all the prizes, and so many people got so many great things. That was just really incredible. I had no idea how much stuff was there to give away until I walked into that little side room to start grabbing stuff. I'm like, oh my God, we've got like 50 things to give away. So it was just amazing. It was amazing. Everybody had such a good time and I was so happy. And thank you so much to John uh, for for hauling all of that stuff around um, and, and bringing all the stuff up to the room. It was really just, uh, what an effort. Um, I, I can't yeah. be more grateful. And everyone who set up and yes. who broke down the party, because yes. I know some of our other hosts were involved in doing that. So yes. um, thank you to everyone. Again, you made it super easy for Jeff and I not to do all the work. So and, uh, we, we actually mostly got to enjoy our convention this year, which was super important. Um, okay. Since we're limited on time, I think what we're going to do instead of going through each day is, is a rapid fire uh, round. So... Let's just mention either panels, parties, just general highlights uh, for the rest of the convention for you guys. I'm going to go to Jesse first. What, what were the, the biggest highlights for you? So my biggest uh, highlight was I did something quote unquote off campus. I went to the uh, Klingon feast that the local Las Vegas production company does. I think it's Pink Flamingo or something. Sorry, guys, if I got it wrong, but Goldie's. <laughs> thing that she does um yep. yeah so um I went to that and it was a lot of fun it was it was not what I expected but it was nice to get off of out of the Rio for one night and just hang with Trekkie somewhere else it, it was also exciting to see the looks that some of us got because <laughs> we were in costume and there was a Klingon with us <laughs> and an Orion but it was it was a lot of fun it was a lot of um performance and uh, trivia and a good good Klingon dinner, you know, with ga and blood wine and that stuff. So it was really good. And I had fun with that. It was a small, intimate group. And, and I look forward to doing something like that again. That was that was my evening highlight, if you will. My convention highlight has to be the gala on um, Saturday night. So there was a lot of competing stuff on Saturday night. And I decided there is nowhere else in the world that all these conductors and performers are going to be underneath the same tent yeah. <laughs> again. So at nine o'clock, I was there listening to the concert and it was, it was absolutely fantastic. I, I, they even had a, a vocal artist to come in and sing the original series theme at the end. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was really, really good. And, and uh, I feel like I need to mention, we did have um, something happen at the concert right before it yeah. started. Uh, somebody had passed out and eventually passed away. And so uh, thoughts and um, prayers to, to that person and to the Nevada Pops, because they they kept going and they were real professionals. And we, we actually didn't know what was going on until it was all over. So hats off to them. For sure. Marina, what about you? Oh my gosh, picking just one thing is nearly impossible. So I'm going to try to kind of 
try to rush through everything that just kind of pops into my head because there were a lot of really bright moments in this you know this was another great convention for me the uh well jason isaacs that was his very first star trek convention obviously not his very first convention because he already has potterheads so he knows how to deal with a large evolved fandom but he did a fantastic job i mean it was like a 45 minute you know he was on the stage by himself without a host and he just barreled through blew everybody's minds it was probably one of my favorite uh panels of the entire convention uh women in track panel was great they had uh mary chief of marina service as special guests and um amy and the ladies so i mean I'm trying to, uh, Sarah was there, Sue was there. They did a fantastic job. This is, I'm, I'm very glad that this particular panel is now held on the main stage because, the, you know, the ladies are really doing a great job with this. Um, Friday, fan sets party. This is, they, I was so looking forward to it. I can't even tell you. And it really proved to be a, oh, an yeah. amazing highlight. The fan sets team, I love them to beats. I don't even know how I wasn't stopped at the McCarran because I was <laughs> taking away <laughs> like literally pounds of pins with me after stopping <laughs> at their booth. Uh, so that was fantastic. Um, Saturday, of course, well, besides the gala, Jesse already covered that. Uh, well, my personal favorite, Kate Mulgrew, did a fantastic uh, job on, on stage. Her panel was wonderful. Um, but, of course, there was also the unbelievable announcement, you know, the whole thing when Sir Patrick came out. I was, I, I'm considering that I'm in the third row. I saw the whole thing actually happening right there and then, especially when a side doors opened and, like, 20 CBS people walked out, the execs. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and they were all sitting there, like, waiting for the reaction and then this sheer pandemonium that happened. That has already been covered everywhere, so I'm not even going <laughs> to go into any detail. But that certainly was, uh, I think I was screaming. I'm not, I don't really <laughs> remember exactly what happened because it was such an unbelievable moment. Um, and then, of course, Sunday, all the discovery panels. Um, I enjoyed every single one of them. I mean, literally, they, these guys just took it to the next level. You know, it's, a, it's probably a good thing that they broke them up into how many would total? Five? Uh, because, you know, putting everybody on the stage would have been probably too much. So very enjoyable. I'm trying to rack my brain, but I'm pretty sure that, that those are probably the absolute highlights for me. Uh, yeah. And you covered some of the things that I would have, um, especially the women in Trek panel. Always a highlight. I'd never, ever miss that panel. It was one of few that I sat in on. I did get to see Jason Isaacs as well. I was not there for the Patrick Stewart announcement. However, I will direct people uh, to one of our recent episodes of uh, Weekly Trek, and we have the audio from that announcement on that. So I'm sure that at this point, everyone has heard it. It's been on Trek Core yeah. and other places. As, but As a matter of fact, uh, StarTrek.com, I think they were the ones who released the official video because yeah. they actually, before, as uh, I, re I was not there for uh, William Shatner's panel, but I made it like maybe 15 minutes before the end. And I realized that they actually installed cameras on either side, you know, like like a, a real deal cameras, you know, big, big black things. And I'm like, well, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. But and then once the CBS people walked out, I realized there was something really serious going to happen. So, of course, they were filming the whole thing. And the official video was released, um, I think, last week. Yeah, it was. I mean, I was not in the room, but even the buzz from people afterwards just coming out like they just took drugs <laughs> it was, <laughs> i don't know it was it was palpable everywhere uh, it was so mind-blowing it was super, fantastic super special event yeah i just have to emphasize like because people have said year after year oh we don't get anything at stlv um this was probably the biggest announcement for star yeah. trek year long Absolutely. and we got it at stlv so and yeah. one of our fans one of our fans one of our members from the unofficial group robin i don't know if you guys saw her post her video of her running down the hall and it says when i found out patrick stewart was on stage <laughs> in her costume <laughs> and her like <laughs> it was so hilarious <laughs> so i direct you to facebook to find that because you will well, not laugh louder than that <laughs> that I've seen that. It's hilarious. Uh, Jeff, what about you? Convention highlights? Oh, I have, I have a few that I can throw out there. Uh, I'll also echo the fan sets party. Like Marina said, they just, it was insane. They totally packed that place. There were people standing outside uh, in the hallway outside of the other room uh, wanting to get in. There was just no room left. Um, yeah. So, you know, next year, guys, get there early. <laughs> get actually, there early. Yeah, actually, Something that I was told uh, after the party as my sister and I were leaving, uh, that particular location, they will be 
oh, there's that side wall that kind of looks like a brick wall. Mm -hmm. and by the sound of it, they're gonna knock it down to to make more space. Good. So the actual the actual the other room, the bar, it will be physically larger. Yeah, um, they're reconfiguring the yeah, whole place. Yeah. Yeah, but generally speaking, yeah, totally get in there because this is a great party to check out. It was an absolute mob scene, and you know, I one one of the and and not to take anything away from the Fantas party, but one of my big highlights from that party was. Um, I got to sit. I got to sit next to uh, Vic Mignogna, and um, I, I just actually recently. I'm not an anime guy, but I just recently watched Full Metal Alchemist, which and he does the voice of the lead character, and it gave me a totally different perspective on Vic and his talents. And just getting to sit there and talk to him about it, and he did the voice for it, uh, and it was just it was mind blowing. It was great. Um, such a such a good time, and it was so nice to see the Fancits guys and Truck Geeks guys having such a good time, and everybody else, and. Um, you know, so many of our friends and, and fellow podcasters and frequent guests on this show showed up there. Uh, it was just a really great, great, great night. So, um, you know, guys, you know, definitely get there next year if you're going. It's going to be even bigger. Um, let's see what else happened. Oh, oh like Jesse, uh, I actually got out of the Rio for one day and it was Thursday. I spent most of the day uh, hanging out with Craig Cohen, uh, the original co-founder of the Tricorder Transmission. I hadn't seen him in two years. Uh, we just went out, we, uh, we hung out for a while, talked about old times, and it was a nice kind of break from the insanity of the convention, getting out there and just going out into Vegas and enjoying uh, the time with an old friend. That was a, a really big highlight for me. Um, let's see, what else can I throw out there? Oh, um, so well, I, I mentioned Sandigorn earlier, but Sandigorn had uh, just an incredible, incredible year this year. So many incredible people. Such a such a great time. One of the bucket list items for Santa Gorn was checked off this year. I got a professional op with William Shatner. <laughs> uh, so it's it's what was his reaction to <laughs> Well, the 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 op was kind of a mind scrambler because I was actually in the op and so was Santa Gorn. So uh, that was a head scratcher. But uh, <laughs> a, a, a friend of a, a good friend of mine donned the suit and uh, we got to the front of the line uh, really quickly and uh, we got the, the picture with Santa Gordon and Shatner when he saw <laughs> when he saw the suit his reaction was kind of a puzzled look and he said well, why don't you take off that mask so people can see who you are so I guess he didn't really get the point of, of that op but um, it, it turned out well uh, it, you know I, I could I could go into the, uh, the, the the pitfalls of professional ops at STLV, but I think we talked about that on previous uh, episodes. So uh, go back and listen to some of those. Since everyone knows the identity of Santa Gorn, can we give credit where credit is due to Santa Gorn's elf this year? Yes, and yes, yes. Uh, my my uh, my good friend Sarah actually she volunteered to be uh, my assistant uh, when I didn't have an assistant. You know, so other people had volunteered, but uh, she volunteered to step up on any day that I didn't have an assistant. And uh, after. Walking with me on the first day, um, she had such a good time. She asked if uh, she could try the suit on herself. So she's about the same height as me. So it, it fit pretty well, and the illusion was there. So uh, she wanted to actually go out and do Santa Gorn herself. And I thought, you know what? This is a great idea. This will be a good uh, a good head scratcher for people So because people know who I am now. So seeing awesome. me walking alongside Santa Gorn, uh, I got a – the first time we did that, man, we got so many jaw drops. It was great. It yeah, was, it was it, great. I, I got to see some of that. And I uh, props to Sarah. Sarah, good job. You like, <laughs> Yeah. I had no idea. And her and I talk often. So. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I got to say she, she – I got to give her props. She went full Disney with it just like I do. No, no talking, just waving and hand gestures and handing out the pins and – you know, it was it was a great, great, great time. So, uh, really, really good stuff. Uh, Santa Gorn just just killed it this year. Um, I think there may be some big plans for 2019. Not going to reveal what the plans are, but um, if it works out, there might be some big surprises coming uh, next year for Santa Gorn. And oh, and one more note about Santa Gorn, and I, I really don't want to sound self-serving, but this was the first year that I actually drew the design for the pin from scratch myself. And uh, I, I got so many great compliments on it. I was just 
truly flattered that people really liked it and um you know the, the design was it took me a while to draw it and i'm not really not a great artist by any stretch of the imagination but i put a lot of time and effort into that so you know thanks to everybody who uh who complimented that pin and that really meant a lot to me so thank you for that um God, what else? I got ate so much smash burger this year. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I ate no smash burger. Oh. No smash hey. burger, no letzels pretzels. And this is because I, I literally forgot to eat a few days <laughs> until like dinner. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was. Horrible. I had no time to eat. I was basically, I would eat like a banana or a, I don't know, a croissant in the morning. And then the next time it would be all the way in the evening, either a smash burger or something else. Yeah. And, oh, speaking of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the only gold, right? Jesse, you do captains, right? Yeah. So uh, we, something that needs to be brought up is I thought it was an extremely positive improvement uh, this year. Um, the golden captain's chair, din the, the dinners, the special dinners have been moved from the voodoo lounge downstairs. And it was great. I forget when was the last time I actually had such a wonderful dinner, you know, like actually sitting down and having good food with pretty decent entertainment. I didn't yeah. stay for the entire concert that Joe Piscopo did, even though from what I understand, he did, you know, A to Z, he went all the way. But I was there, I just wanted to kind of like sit down, very nice, maybe meet, meet some new people. It was basically myself, my sister, well, Harvey was there, and then it was seven other unknown people that and we spent like an hour just chatting while having a wonderful dinner the menu was excellent yeah i was very impressed with that and, and i'll more like i've done conference services before i was more impressed by how fast so yes we ate in the main in the pavilion and yeah. they put the wall up right and somewhere between six and eight they have taken all the chairs out put tables in and then put the chairs back in somehow keeping track of all the numbers. And they did this two nights in a row. Yeah. And I was just shocked. I, I am. I suspect that the people who put the tables together may have been the people who actually put everything back together. So it's the, whoever was doing the catering. So whatever that company is, they did a magnificent job because there were a lot of people uh, servicing everybody. I mean, you had folks walking around checking that everybody had water, you know, people directing, they had separate station stations, you know, where you could get uh, tea or coffee for free and there were cash bars if you wanted alcohol and the actual food stations, there wasn't even once where you would go up and it's like, oh, they're out of salad. No, no, no. You know, they see that there's like a third of, of the, say, the plate with roast beef for meeting. No, no, the person would pop up and immediately exchange for, for the next hot plates, you know, with full, you know, completely full, full plate. So it, it was really well done. And I hope they kind of continue doing this. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know, it, it has been discussed that, you know, you no longer have this whole idea you know, to vibe, you know, the lounge and you have the view of uh, Vegas. You can walk out on the rooftop and the whole thing. So it's, it's, you know, it's the cons and pros. But overall, I was I was very happy with the way things were done. Yeah. The, the good thing, though, that I didn't notice, I think, last year, if it happened because of the change this year, is that. You can actually go up to the Voodoo Lounge and not pay if you go yeah. early enough in the week. I had no idea. So I went earlier in the week with my little gang, you know, just because we like to take our yearly photo up there. And that was just fine. It, it, it you know, it was better and more comfortable because we weren't uh, on top of each other. So I'll, there was a lot of skepticism, Marina, right, over how is this yeah. really going to go? Yeah. And and honestly, it, it went it it went it oh it exceeded expectations on my part. I have yeah. To say. It was it was a little bit funny because people, you know, of course, have had a lot of people showed up and started to queue very very early. And I was like, well, if they're doing this in the main theater, just by virtue of its size, you know, everybody will fit. So there's really no sense in you know, like, does it matter if you show up like literally? an hour before the scheduled time or half an hour after. And it really proved to be that way because little, there was sitting for everyone. They had this giant, you know, 10 seater round tables that, you know, everybody could sit down comfortably and enjoy their meal. So all in all, that was one thing that I'm like, great. Two th you know, two thumbs up. Yep. Yeah. I heard positive things from pretty much everyone I know that went to those parties. But um, speaking of the Voodoo Lounge, one of my highlights, which I did not even know about, and that's because it happens, my understanding, very, very suddenly, like two days before the convention, um, our friends Sean Mooney and Zach Nichols uh, created the unofficial Star Trek after party. Um, I think technically it's the Beam Me Up unofficial Star Trek after party. 
but it was free. It was on the very, very top, you know, in the, the voodoo outside. Uh, it was a ton of fun. It was a giant, giant mm -hmm. dance party. And uh, I think I was down at I bar and things were pretty dead. I'm like, where is everyone? And <laughs> yeah, Jocelyn texted me and she's like, I'm at this party. It's pretty cool. And, and so it was yeah. so Hilarious, because everyone kept walking around going, just say you're with Sean Mooney. Just say yeah. you're with Sean Mooney. <laughs> it was it was awesome. I went up there, and like I have said uh, for years now, my, me and some of my girlfriends have just been like, we have to go dancing. We have to go dancing. But you never, I never want to go up to Voodoo when it's not Star Trek people. Yeah. So this was such a fun party. I danced for hours. I had a phenomenal time. And I hope that Sean and Zach do this again. I, I'm pretty sure they're going to, and we may try to incorporate it with the, the the unofficial STLV group somehow. But that that was just that was so much fun and so many faces. Certainly a highlight uh, for me. Panel wise, like I said, I didn't get to sit on a whole lot. Women in Trek, as I said, was you know isn't always great. I didn't get to see the the Shakespeare panel, but I heard that it was also yeah. awesome of women again and with uh, Mary Chifo on that one as well. And then I I think for me, probably the biggest highlight was our Night of Diversity party, uh, which, you know, hosted by Tricorder Transmissions, but I have to give credit where credit is due. Um, this party was organized by uh, William Conlon, Marty Ali, uh, Tyler Habinger, Madison Spencer, and then Eric Erickson was one of was our DJ, and I, I think that's everybody. I hope I'm not mm -hmm. leaving anyone else. Um, but they they put together this party. We raised like almost twenty five hundred dollars for charity. I think I should have had these numbers in front of me. We got twenty two twenty something homeless LGBT kids off the streets for one night, which literally could have saved one of their lives. It was just a phenomenal effort, um, and we had so many donations, and it's just goodwill donations. Like, all we did was reach out and say, listen, would you be willing to donate an item for our raffle? Uh, we, we underestimated the need for raffle tickets because we, we basically sold out of raffle tickets. It was, it was so much fun. There was a dance party there, too. Uh, we were super honored to have Anthony Rapp and Wilson Cruz stop by the party. Uh, I think they stayed for about an hour, but that was a whirlwind in and of itself. So I just such 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 a phenomenal effort. And I think that what also really stuck out to me um, were some of some of our con attendees that wouldn't have been able to to leave the Rio otherwise due to accessibility issues were able to go to this party. Uh, and regardless of what what kind of party it is, that's why it's just so important to try to have stuff at the Rio. Uh, because not everyone has the ability to hop in a cab and go somewhere else. So that was just, that really touched me that that people were able to come to the party because of that. So I announced today, and I will announce it now, we will be having the party again next year. It will be the Saturday night of the convention, and there will be more details to come down the road. But yeah, that that was a big deal. And I'll I'll talk about a little bit more about how impactful that night was for me in a second here, but I did briefly want to talk about, because I know, Jeff, you said you spent time away from the convention, not, mm -hmm. not doing Star Trek things. And yep. I spent some time away from the convention at a fencing tournament, not doing Star Trek things. Uh, and that was, getting that break was really enjoyable uh, for me, just to be able to take a step away for a little bit and come back. Um, Jesse, it sounds like your convention experience was a little different too this year. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, so like this year for, for health reasons and, and just because I wanted to feel better, I actually took the advice that Karen Hinckley has been giving me for years, which is four hours of sleep, two meals a day, and at least one shower a day. <laughs> so, so I didn't stay up all to, all the time, and and it was very noticed by a lot of people. I also wasn't at the bars a lot because I I've been trying to avoid a lot of alcohol. So it was different just because. You kind of all, we all do this. We all congregate at either Masquerade or I-Bar, and that's where we find each other. But like um, 
this year kind of opened up my eyes to, well, what do we do if, if we don't want to be around smoke or alcohol? And, and selfishly, I have not thought about that until this year when I went through it. And um, I, I honestly don't know the answer, but I know it's something that's top of my list to see what we can do. There's, um, I'm, I'm trying to solicit feedback on the down low, if you will, just to see um, how we can help with that, Heather. Cause like, you know, I love the newbies thing and I love the landing part. And I love all that stuff, but there are like, for me, I, it wasn't that I didn't want to be around alcohol. Honestly, it was that I had so many people because of the Facebook group and the podcast who wanted to buy me a drink, you know, and Heather, I'm sure you've experienced this. And, and that face, when you have to say no, <laughs> I just can't, I just can't do it. So I just avoided the bars whenever I could, or had a cup of water with a lime in it, you know, I, yeah. I think there's a lot that you can do, but there are people who aren't like in Vegas, I am a little different. I'm more outgoing and, and, and I can play along and there are people who, who aren't as comfortable in those situations. So um, knowing that I'm, I'm going to kind of see what I can do between now and then to see what we can do to engage our, our folks who, who don't want to be near a bar or don't want to be near cigarettes or don't want to be near alcohol for one reason or the other. I mean, and, and just provide a, another safe space at, at night, you know, because yeah. um, during the day we're okay because the convention's hall is open. So it's really just nighttime when we want to hang out, but there's no, absolutely nowhere to go unless you go to a room party. Yeah. And that's, that's the difficulty. And that's, the problems that I've run into over the past few years, um, not having available space and then not having people to help host things. Uh, because I, I like to do whatever I'm going to do in the evenings. And, you know, I mentioned going over to the, the fencing tournament and like Friday, I didn't, I didn't come back. And part of that was I wound up having uh, some pain issues. So I couldn't walk anywhere. Uh, and I missed the fan geeks party because of that, which was a bummer. Um, but it definitely having, having people that, that can host things is a big deal. And then finding these, these spaces and, you know, if the Starbucks down by the convention center had been open 24 hours, like the one by Ipanema, that would have been great. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, you know, anyone who listens to the podcast, we're always open to ideas, suggestions, anyone who wants to take a leadership role, um, the group is your group. So we we want to make it better for everyone. And this is something that we've really struggled with over time. Uh, and like Jesse said, not totally sure what the solution is quite yet, um, but we are committed to, to working on it. You guys will Go take ahead. feedback on the show, right? Like you, you have a place to collect um, comments if anybody from listening to this wants to kind of throw it out an idea or do you just ask them to uh, post in a group I would you know at this point since we have now the unofficial STLV admins page I would send a message through that page otherwise yeah I would I would send it to the page because right now we don't have just an email for the podcast that sound right Jeff yeah well we can we can have one but uh, yeah, right now we don't well and yeah uh hmm. I sounds like there's something the, more there yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so so i guess since we're getting close to time uh we will break break the breaking news um and i i will start say this so um jeff and i as managing partners of the network are extremely blessed to have watched this network grow over the past three years like three mm -hmm. years is not a lot of time uh but uh, the, the network has exploded and, and is continuing to grow and ex explode and just be crazy. And so Jeff and I, um, and me specifically, wanted to find a way to kind of take a step back so that we can better manage the network. Uh, and when it comes to shore leave, I know that in the past year or so, Jeff and I have found ourselves in an odd place where we're not going to a lot of conventions. So it's it's difficult for us to really share in the experience of talking about conventions that we don't go to. I mean, it's sure it's easy to interview yeah. uh, people, um, but but we we felt that it was time to to bequeath <laughs> shore leave onto people that actually go to conventions. Um, and to breathe a little bit of life into the podcast, um, mm -hmm. which will help Jeff and I 
take a step back. So we are officially announcing that our dear friends here, Jesse and Marina, will be the new hosts of Shore Leave. <laughs> yes. <Yay. laughs> yes. Kind of a bittersweet I, moment, but yeah, well. I'm not not gonna cry. <laughs> uh, I think my it, first podcast, my first Shore Leave, Heather cried. How could you not cry on the last one that uh, you're doing as a host? <laughs> I will, I'll probably cry in a minute. Um, <laughs> Yeah, if you know, Shirley was my baby, and Shirley, you know, came just out of a love for STLV and wanting to help help people get there so that they can experience this phenomenal thing that changed my life um, and the lives of so many other people. Again, trying not to cry. So I it just I I didn't know of anyone else that would that would be better uh, to to take the reins than. Than the two of you. Um, so, so thank you for stepping up and doing that. Given that you're both admins in the group, you have that presence already. So uh, Jeff and I will still be around and we're still, we'll still make appearances from time to time, especially with STLV stuff. But we're excited to see what you guys do and where you go. Because I guess you're, the, the next short leave is up to you guys. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Heather and Jeff, I will tell you that you have started like a, a family show, if you will. Like this yeah. is where I go to when I need to, to hear from my friends that I don't see every uh, yeah, until once a year. So thank you so much for what you've done. And, and I hope that we make you proud. Now, I know Marina and I haven't sat down and done uh, a brainstorming session but uh, marina i assume that's coming for us and absolutely marina's always on the prowl for a good con <laughs> <So>. <laughs> hey i already managed to fit in right after vegas so yeah. i'm there you know and uh, yeah. I'll, I'll be frequenting other cons as well just just the nature of my job allows me to do that so i'm i'm excited and and all you guys who are wondering where I'll be, you just keep an eye on the on the group because uh, I know the week of the 27th I'll be in Denver. There's not a con there, but like I also like to go and visit fellow Trekkies, and I don't know. I think there's someone in Denver I may need to go see while I'm there. There's the Heather there. I feel really, I feel kind of dumb right now because we do have a Facebook page for Shore Leave, <laughs> Derp. So I I guess that people who want to give feedback about stlv stuff and what we can do and then also if you guys are are open to you know idea suggestions of things to talk about that would be good as but before we close out tonight i did want to take a minute um to i guess officially announce via podcast so i when i when i decided to hand over the reins of shore leave I certainly did not plan to fill that space with another podcast. <laughs> the The goal was to uh, take some of the work off of my hands. However, uh, the maybe the true highlight, not going to cry, of STLV for me this year uh, was the the influx of LGBTQ people, uh, especially uh, gay men and gay gay couples. Like, I don't know where y'all came from, but thank you for showing up. Uh, I, I did ask, we have a STLV uh, LGBTQPIA plus group on Facebook. And I, I asked everyone, you know, what was your impetus to, to the newbies for coming this year? And most of them were just like, oh, well, I had heard about it. Uh, and, you know, this just was the year. Some people that I talked to in person did allude to having, you know, our first gay couple in Star Trek Discovery. So uh, that's just great to hear. But you know, I'm a queer person. I don't, I don't look like a queer person because my relationship doesn't quite align, but I'm pansexual polyamorous woman. And it's, I've done what I can over the past few years to uh, kind of bring light to the fact that, you know, we're here, like we, we have a large queer community at STLV. Uh, and I felt after seeing this influx of people that it was time to help tell stories and talk about uh, what what we get out of Star Trek because Star Trek hasn't always really done right by the LBGT community. But at the same time, um, a lot of us have have really valued uh, where Star Trek has made an effort. So we're going to be talking about a lot of this stuff in our new podcast called Queer Trek. And uh, my co-host for that will be Marty Ali from Reading Trek. And we are working on getting an intro episode out to everyone soon but uh it this podcast will basically be 
the LGBTQ, STLV, and Star Trek Communities podcast. Um, we're going to be telling stories, you know, coming out stories, life stories, life-changing stories, how Star Trek um, has affected our lives, and then talking about social issues within Star Trek related to the community. And I am taking guest submissions and uh, subject submissions. So that will all be coming soon once we get the, the web page up and running and everything. I did not cry, which I'm really proud of. Um, <laughs> 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 but it's just something that is is very, very important to me. So now I've stepped away from shore leave and got myself in trouble with the whole other podcast. And don't worry, guys, Disco Trek is coming. We're, we're doing our Laurel episode soon. So Disco Trek will be in full effect. Jeff and I will be back with season two. Uh, with episodes for each discovery episode. I think that that's that's all of our major network news for right now. I think so. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Jesse and Marina will be hard at work talking about the next episode. Yes. And we'll and, try ah, to do our best. Yes. A little you, scared and a little fun all at the same oh, time. Yes. <laughs> you will be you you're already host. Like you've been on the show so many times. You're professionals. All you gotta do is think up ideas uh and, and make sure to have fun and don't be don't be too scared. It's it's a <laughs> you'll both do fine. Yeah. Thank you're you. Gonna, you're Thank gonna you. be great. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tricorder family. Yes. Um, Thank you. You were already family, but <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I, I know that my baby is good. It is in good hands. So. Yes. Couldn't be two better people. Yeah. All right. Well, before we go, let's tell people where to find us on social media. Jesse, where can we find you? You can uh, find me on Facebook. I'm also on Twitter. I've changed my handle. It is now the outrageous Okendo, O-K-E-N-D-O. <laughs> After the outrageous Okuna episode that was at STLV, just because I have crazy friends. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Marina, what about you? Uh, same thing. Uh, Facebook, you can find me by my full name. Uh, and Twitter, my handle is uh, Dracorex, D R A K K O R E X. And, uh, you know, if you, if you want to message at me in Twitter, feel free to do so. It's an open account. I didn't make it private. But if you are trying to contact me on Facebook, do shoot me a message explaining, you know, where <laughs> are you? <laughs> How do you know me or yeah. you met? Because I do get uh, requests from people who actually, you know, Captain so-and-so. I'm like, that's not your real name. I don't know if we met. So, yeah. you know, uh, you know, actually reach out and say who you are and how you know me. So that's me. Sounds good. Jeff, what about you? I am Warp Factor Jeff on Twitter, and you can find me in the unofficial Star Trek Las Vegas convention group on Facebook along with the rest of us. Yep, we are all in that darn group. We love you guys so much, everyone who's in that group. Um, quick PSA at the heel of Marina's statement there, and I've said this in the group, but um, yes, you do not have to accept friend requests from people that you don't know, especially if they don't message you. Um, I did post some little Spock images saying, like, I do not accept friend requests from people I don't know. Stuff that you can put as, like, your featured photo on your Facebook profile. Uh, many people are totally okay with it and want to make as many friends as they can, and that is perfectly fine and acceptable, but not everyone is like that. Uh, it can get very overwhelming, and the creepiest thing ever is when you add someone and then they go through your photo albums and like every picture of your face or your costume or whatever. It's creepy. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> but um, you can find me in the group, and then on Twitter, I am at LLA Posper. We are the tricordertransmissions.com. Uh, the show is at Shore Leave. Uh, the network is at Tricorder Show. We, we will be back soon. I hope everyone is excited as we are about this, this new announcement and the new developments at Tricorder. There will be more information about what else is going on in the network down the line. Until then, live long and prosper. <laughs>